Good morning and welcome everyone to the 2024 State of the City. I am Wendy Poishbeg. I am the currently serving as the interim CEO and president of Economic Alliance Snohomish County, and I'm excited to be your MC this morning. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge some of the dignitaries in the room today. When I call your name, if you could please just give a little wave and we will save our um, applause till after. I'd first like to acknowledge Council President George Hurst, Council Vice President Julieta Altamaro Crosby, Council Member Josh Binda, Council Member Nick Colello, Council Member Patrick Decker, Council Member David Parshall, Council Member Shirley Sutton, Municipal Court Judge Valerie Buffew, Jessica Corbin from Congressman Rick Larson's office, Cameron Caldwell from Senator Maria Cantwell's office, Hayden Jenkins from Senator Patty Murray's office, Mayor Mike Rosen from the City of Edmonds, Janet Schwetti, Arlington City Council Member and Community Transit Board Member, Tom Merrill, Snohomish City Council Member and Community Transit Board Member, Janet Pope, Executive Director of the District, Steve Woodard, Mount Lake Terrace City Council, Chris Eck, Edmond City Council, Rick Engelfritz, Community Transit CEO, and Mike Evans, Chair of the Snohomish Tribe. If I've forgotten anybody, could you please raise your hand and can our audience please give a round of applause to all of those that serve for us. Today we are celebrating Linwood's 65th, 65th birthday. How exciting is that? Since 1959, Linwood has experienced an incredible amount of growth and a vital economic anchor in Snohomish County. And as someone who grew up right here in Alderwood Manor, just a stone's throw from where we stand, Linwood is not just a place on a map for me, it's the canvas of my childhood. I remember when Alderwood Mall was the epicenter of my universe. It was there after shopping at Mr. Rags and Spencer Gifts that I met my mother at the iconic elephant sculpture after adventures with friends it was our landmark. It was a familiar beacon in a bustling crowd. I recall the thrill of watching movies, The Goonies, E.T., and Dirty Dancing at the Grand Cinemas. These weren't just films. They were the shared experiences, moments where our community came together, bound by the magic of storytelling. And let's not forget Mariposa, my first job, and a rite of passage, where I learned not just about retail, but about responsibility, teamwork, and the nuances of customer service. But these memories, as vivid and cherished as they are, represent more than nostalgia, they embody the profound evolution of Linwood. The mall, my third place, wasn't just a hub of commerce, it was and continues to be a vibrant ecosystem, reflecting on the diversity and dynamism of the community. It stands as a testament to the city's growth, as an anchor that attracts people from all walks of life, fostering interactions, creating jobs, and spinning the wheels of our local economy. This is what economic development is all about. It's not just business transactions or cold, hard infrastructure. It's about creating spaces that serve as community hubs where memories are made, where businesses thrive, and where people, introspective of their backgrounds, can come together. As the one and only economic development organization in Snohomish County, Economic Alliance Snohomish County is laser focused on empowering local businesses, attracting new investment, and, quality grow and growing quality jobs. We love and appreciate our partnership with the city of Linwood to champion the business community, providing technical assistance along with business planning, attraction, and retention services in order to create a thriving, equitable community with opportunities for all. Today, as the city shares the future of Linwood, remember that we're not just talking about buildings and businesses, but about the heart and soul of our community, 
about places like the Alderwood Mall that have grown with us, shaping and reflecting our collective story. This is what we aim to replicate and foster throughout Linwood and Snohomish County, a sense of place, belonging, and opportunity. Our efforts in business attraction and development go beyond economic metrics. They are about building a community where every resident, every business, and every visitor can find their landmark, their movie experience, their first job. They're about creating a Linwood that continues to be a home worth returning to, a place where new memories are waiting to be made. So throughout today's event, we will look back on this area's rich history that have led us to this moment and where we are today. We will also look forward to or look towards Linwood's promising future and where it is on the horizon. To begin, it's important for us to acknowledge that we are stewards of this land. And Doug Rayford, Equity and Social Justice Advisor for the City of Linwood, will now provide the land acknowledgement. Good morning. We acknowledge that the City of Linwood is located on the traditional lands of the Snohomish tribe and the confederation of Tulalip tribes and their families. For generations, these indigenous communities have lived on the land and we recognize, support, and advocate alongside them. We also acknowledge the forced removal of indigenous communities from their homelands as a result of the 1855 Treaty of Point Elliot. We understand that land acknowledgments are only the first step in our effort to support Coast Sahelish tribes and educate non-natives about their lived history. We strive to achieve this through building relationships with indigenous communities, supporting indigenous commerce, government to government partnerships, and lifting indigenous voices to create equity for all. Through these actions, we hope to not only pay respect to the past, but also collaborate in create, creating a sustainable future, hand in hand with the first protectors of our shared environment. Now, it is my honor to invite the Honorable Mike Evans, Chair of the Snohomish Tribe of Indians to the stage to provide a tribal blessing. Thank you. Ha ha shaksiabad, our holy heavenly father. We're so thankful that you have looked down upon us and given us this opportunity to come together, to share our hearts and our thoughts, to enjoy each other. Thank you, Father, for the relationship we have with the city of Linwood. Thank you for the many blessings that come from that And we ask that you continue to be with them that, and we might be able to share together some of the history before history was written. And so on behalf of the Snohomish tribe of Indians, and we want to welcome each and every one of you, those on my left, those in the back, and those on my right. Welcome to Snohomish Territory, all my relations. Thank you, Mike, for that blessing. We are so honored to have you here today. And now I would like to invite Linwood City Council President George Hurst to provide opening remarks to help us kick off this event. Please join me in welcoming him, him, welcoming, welcoming him to the stage. Ooh, it's tall up here. Um, anyway, oh, this is not Vanna White. This is my wife, Pam. We are, uh, she's a uh, 
protector of a family heirloom. Our kids did this poster, and it's related to, to what my uh, talk is. So I thank uh, Mayor Fuzel for the opportunity to speak today. The theme today is to celebrate the city's 65th birthday. We're looking at the past, the present, and the future. And for me, looking at the past history of, of Linwood is pretty exciting because I have both an undergraduate and graduate degree in American history, and we're gonna hear more about the talk of history. But today, what I would like to talk about is the future of Linwood. So I've entitled my talk, Back to the Future. And if you, if you remember, in the 1980s, there were three movies. Uh, they probably should have just done two. But it was a constant story of what Marty McFly and Doc Brown doing this crazy time travel throughout these movies. And so what I want to do today is let's use our imagination. We don't have a DeLorean, so let's use our imagination to do some time travel. And first, let's look into the past. So last week... I attended a meeting at the Puget Sound Regional Council, and there was a discussion about decisions that had been made in the past that we now, in the present, look back and say, what were they thinking? In 1968, the community leaders in, in Seattle and King County proposed a 49-mile rail network. Senator Magnuson, longtime senator, he was able to, to procure $900 million of federal funds to go towards this project. This project, 49 miles, was going to cost $1.3 billion. So he had three quarters of the funds set from the federal government. All the city and King County had to do was to pass some bonds. Well, in 1968 and 1970, those bonds failed. So what happened to the $900 million? That $900 million went to the city of, of Atlanta, and they were able to form the Metropolitan Atlanta Transit Authority, I think it is. It's still functioning. It's full of rails and full of buses. So in 1968 and 1970, what were those people thinking? Let's fast forward to, 19, to the 1990s, and some residents and stakeholders and city council members in Linwood created what it was called the Linwood, Linwood, Linwood Legend Initiative. And what came out of that were some plans for the future of the city. One of them was a, what they called the triangle, the Linwood Triangle, and that was going to be the city center. And in 1997, the city council actually passed a proposal for a multi-housing um, and multi-housing and a high-density transit system to feed this city center. That was in 1997. So, what were those council members thinking? I think what they were thinking about was the future residents and visitors of Linwood. I think they did a good job. So let's go back to the future. That's what we we're going to talk about. And actually, let's go back to what's literally in back of me in the future. So beyond these walls, there's 13 acres of what we called the Linwood Public Facilities District. And now we just call it the district. And there are great plans for this district. This building, the event center, is going to expand. It's going to expand back, and there's going to be an amphitheater. There's going to be, that theater will be for performing arts and concerts. A little farther into the property will be a large green space so that, you know, when there's warm, those few warm, <laughs> sunny days that happen, and then the clouds come in and we have winter, well, we can imagine a skating rink back there. And along in this property is going to be a hotel. There's going to be affordable housing. This is just, you know, a fantastic future for this area. And actually, if you want to know more, there is a table in the back. I saw it about if you want to learn more about the district's plans. And within this district, there's going to be coffee shops, there'll be uh, cafes, and food that's going to reflect the diversity of the city of Linwood. 
which it is now. So we've talked about what's behind my back in the future. What's behind your back in the future? We've seen that 196 has been redeveloped, and that's great. But let's hop over to 198th, which is supposed going to be a walking promenade from 44th to 40th. It's going to be anchored by the North Line Village. You know, that's the area where we used to, if you remember, I think it was a Royal Fork, Fork, Royal Fork Buffet or an Asian Buffet. That's no longer. So instead, there's going to be housing there. There's going to be a plaza there. There's going to be what we think is going to possibly be offices. Who knows? Offices that are being reimagined right now. And even plans for a movie theater. You know, people are still going to the movies. In fact, we've just been going to the theater the last few months watching The Chosen. That's a good series. You should watch it. But anyway, um, so we have this walking promenade. So when you go from the North Line Village across 44th, you're walking up 198th. On both sides, there's going to be housing. But on the first floors, there's going to be retail shops. And I hope an ice cream store. And then, you know, when you're halfway there on the left-hand side, there's going to be a park. And that park is where the Goodwill store is right now. Just recently, the city council uh, authorized the purchase of that parcel for a park. So what was the city council thinking about? Well, we were thinking that we needed to make sure there was a green space in the, for the community to gather while enjoying the one thing that consistently the residents of Linwood have asked for, and that's a city center. A place where folks will meet with friends at the park, share a meal, walk along that street, and they'll know that Linwood is their home. And we are working to make sure that that city center becomes a reality. So the theme for today is a birthday celebration of the past, the present, and the future of Linwood. We can celebrate the past and we live in the present, but I can't wait until we are back to the future. Thank you. Thank you, Council President Hurst. It's hard not to miss the growth of this great city almost daily. I feel like every time I drive around Linwood, I see something new, which is so exciting. And how about the new light rail station? I can't wait to see the trains roll in for the first time. Preparing for this kind of growth requires a team effort and skilled planning. Linwood Development and Business Service Director David Kleitsch and his team are instrumental in that growth. At this time, David will provide updates on some of these expansive projects. David? We can give him a round of applause. These guys worked hard. Now the dangerous part, let's see if I can get this off. Oh, success. So uh, I have some slides to go through, and I want to elaborate on what uh, uh, Council President uh, Hurst said, and that is uh, there's a lot happening in Linwood, and there's a lot to come. And so I uh, want to do that by giving a little bit of some statistics on the city, and then showing what is currently happening, and then uh, going forward uh, into the future. Uh, so with that, uh, bear with me as I get my bearings on the clicker. So uh, this is some stats on uh, Linwood. These are kind of fun facts. I would like to point out a couple of things that I've uh, that people talk about on a regular basis. Uh, one, we're at 40,000 people, and everybody sees light rail and the new housing as being a stampede of growth. But I want to have a theme here that one, we're prepared, and two, none of that happens all in a day. It happens over time. So if you look at our growth rates, it's about 2% a year. Uh, over the last 40-year cycle, 20-year cycle. And uh, I think that uh, we are doing a very good job of being stewards. Uh, second of all, we're aging. 40, 40 years old is the median age. 
Now, the median age fluctuates up and down, so that is something that is uh, dynamic. Uh, but currently, we see a change in the community as the community, uh, not only Linwood with its birthday, uh, but individuals with their birthdays um, uh, become uh, more, uh, more aware, <laughs> otherwise known as aging. A couple of other uh, statistics on this, 37% uh, uh, of languages are spoken in this community, which shows, again, diversity, diversity, diversity. And Linwood, which to its credit, and which I find so exciting, is Linwood is truly embracing that diversity. And in fact, all are welcome. And there's bumps along the road, but I commend the community for sticking to its vision to be welcoming uh, to all. Moving on to a little bit more uh, tougher subject, and that is median income, 63,000. Uh, that is below the county's um, uh, uh, average income uh, significantly, about 20%. And what's more important about that is a home in Linwood is $700,000, and rent in Linwood average is $2,100. So what we have here is a gap. So the city and its efforts on the housing side is working to get more housing at all income levels. And also the community is fortunate to have a college and to have a job base to where we can have folks get educated, get a job, get a career, and move up in the income levels so they can afford to live here. And that, I personally think, is a, uh, the best way to address displacement and gentrification uh, because we are experiencing that daily in the community. Um, so what keeps our community vibrant? My last statistic, we have over 5,700 business licenses issued in the city. And these are everything from retail to uh, manufacturing, uh, to mom and pops, to major corporate. We have a very dynamic and um, diverse um, uh, job base. And that keeps us in a position where we can do great things and prepare for the future. So how do we do that? This slide shows basically the life cycle of planning and to reiterate uh, Council President Hurst's comments, uh, we have been planning since Linwood was formed. We have a planning history all the way back to the demonstration farm, which is now Heritage Park, uh, to um, uh, the legacy uh, project in 93, which envisioned light rail, mixed use housing, the city center and the Alderwood Mall area. Uh, we have a history that has implemented that through the city center plan, the college district plan, plans for Highway 99, and we are realizing the benefits of that uh, uh, planning uh, through the projects we see coming together uh, today. Um, we also embarked on a new comprehensive plan, and I'll talk about that a little bit uh, later, but that is really continuing in the stewardship, and that's going to be a bit of a theme here, the stewardship of the community on doing your great planning, getting your planning right, embracing and engaging the community to find out what they need, and then all move forward together. So what is happening now? Uh, this is uh, the light rail project. Uh, so a couple of things regarding this project. Uh, it was envisioned in uh, 2008. Uh, it takes a while to do the environmental review, the planning, the engagement, the design, the construction, all of that takes some time. And we are in areas which, uh, earthquake zone, uh, which makes that a little bit more difficult because it is di more difficult to build. Uh, so here you see the ribbon cutting of the garage at the city center station. Uh, that was the first major step in implementation because we kept the transit center running while this construction was happening. Uh, Kudos to Community Transit and Sound Transit for making that happen and that relationship to make that happen. But we did do a ribbon cutting. You can see on the top the design of the station, and we're blessed with having a lot of really cool art in this station. Uh, everything from the hummingbird to the uh, uh, Korean uh, screen in the back to some wonderful sketch glass that you'll see when you use the station and go up onto the platform. So statistics on what's next here, uh, we are going to uh, have about 17,000 borders daily. What's a border? A border is a single trip that gets on the train. So that's 17,000. So we're not going to have 17,000 people arrive here instantaneously. This is us. 
We were included in the 17,900. People that commute to work, people that go to ball games, people that go to the University of Washington. And yes, those people also come up here. So this is connecting Linwood to the region in a way that it's never been connected before. Uh, opening, uh, this fall, uh, 2024, uh, line one opens. Line one will get you downtown. And then in 2025, line two opens, which is to the east side. What does that mean? Well. In the first year, it's gonna be a little tight because we have to continue some bus service because the east side's not ready yet. So we will have eight minute service to get downtown. More importantly, in 2025, we'll have four minute service to get downtown, to transfer to go to the airport, to go to the east side. So again, regional connection. And uh, we will be the terminus until 2037 when Everett Link opens. So we're gonna be, uh, rocking and rolling for a while, but our environmental review, our planning and design has taken that into account. We will be a different place, but we'll still be Linwood. So uh, this is the city center. Let's see if I can, uh, uh oh, pointer time. Let's see if I can get this to work. Uh, this area is the city center, which has been talked about, and that's where a lot of the uh, development is happening uh, currently. Uh, you can see over here some projects that have been built or are under construction. Yes, there is a housing push for apartments, and the reason for that is we are housing limited. We don't have a lot of housing. We need more supply, like I said, at all levels. And so that is uh, the development you see that's occurring in the city center. And yes, uh, not only will there be an ice cream store, but I heard there'll also be a small brew pub. So uh, we uh, meet both ends of the age spectrum on that one. Moving forward, uh, this is a expansion of the city center up to the area of the mall. Uh, this area here is uh, around Alderwood. This whole area here, city center in Alderwood, is the regional growth center. And that is a big part of our planning going forward. And this is an area where we see Linwood taking its most of its growth. Uh, so we're focusing growth by transit, we're focusing growth by transportation, we're taking into account uh, the need to accommodate uh, traffic uh, and uh, mobility as we do these types of projects. Uh, but it's not just the city center, I wanna show uh, that the development is citywide. If you've been out to Highway 99, you uh, will see that uh, we uh, are very prevalent in car dealers. Uh, that is because we are a central point, a central market for new car dealerships and uh, pre-owned in uh, the region. And uh, that uh, not only provides jobs, but it also provides the city with uh, tax revenue. Uh, I wanna do a shout out to uh, Edmonds Community College. They're not on the slide. However, they are doing uh, development out there that's significant. And coming soon will be a transformation of Linwood Hall it still will be Linwood Hall, but there'll be a major expansion, and they're gonna open up a new uh, Triton uh, Learning Commons at uh, um, uh, Adamans College. And I just wanna do, say one other thing. It's very nice, very good, very positive to have Edmonds College in Linwood, which is now a four-year school, which now provides training and education to people that can get a job, get a better job, get a career. And it goes back to that life cycle circle. So uh, we are all uh, connected in that regard, and I think that's a testament to the city of Linwood and its vision for the future. And I want to do a shout out for, uh, for uh, community transit, because at, the, uh, at Edmonds College, there will be the terminus station for the Orange Line, CT's Orange Line, which is opening uh, this month, uh, at the end of the month, March 30th. Uh, that will give east-west connection from Linwood over to the east side, connection to the green line, connection to the blue line. So we really are being a BRT hub uh, for uh, South County. Uh, moving forward, uh, what's happening next? I, I found this graphic, and I think it's a very important graphic, because uh, what it really uh, reflects is um, grateful stewardship. And uh, the remarks today of uh, Mr. Evans, I think, speak to that. Uh, we're all in this together, and having a stewardship and a realization of the future, but also uh, being mindful and a respect of the past are critical. I see that every day in Linwood. People that are in the legacy cohort 
uh, remember Linwood as it was, and they see change. They don't, they're not scared of change, but they want change that's for the betterment of the community. So that stewardship moving forward is uh, what Linwood is all about, and you see that in the development of the comp plan where we are asking the community and engaging the community in what they want to see for Linwood. And we have uh, the core values uh, for the comp plan uh, on the left, and uh, I list down here of the related plans that inform the comp plan, and we're moving forward to implement those. And uh, it'll be uh, a change for Linwood, but I think it'll be a change for the better, just as the plans of the past were a change for the better future. Uh, so Everett Lake Extension, this is now in the planning stage, so you know we're just getting started. We got another 20 years of planning and development of Sound Transit ahead of us. Uh, but again, it will be all connectivity for Linwood, which is our benefit and the county's benefit. So we're in the planning stage now, and uh, we will be moving forward over the next several years to implementation of this uh, important link. And when this is done, it'll complete the spine of Sound Transit as approved by the voters, um, and uh, that'll be uh, quite the thing. So in the city center, uh, regarding uh, the uh, uh, next steps, uh, this is North Line Village on the left. North Line Village uh, was approved several years ago. Uh, they are working, they're doing most of their site work, but uh, this project will probably be uh, kicking off in the next year or two with the first parts of the development. So that's on the left and the right. And uh, you can see it uh, on the right screen, or on the left are some more uh, relationship uh, pictures, and on the right is the, uh, the site plan. And then I wanna talk about this facility. Isn't this a nice facility? I mean, it's uh, accommodating, it's comfortable, uh, and there's more to come. A shout out to the Public Facilities District uh, for developing a master plan uh, for this event center and the surrounding properties, as was mentioned by Council Member Smith. Uh, sorry, <laughs> whoa, uh, Council President Hurst. Uh, and um, that is uh, coming. They're in active design right now, and uh, that's a very exciting project. Uh, also, oh, sorry, go back. Did I miss a slide in here? Yeah, there was a slide on ST3, but uh, I wanna wrap up by just saying that, again, imagine Linwood. Uh, at our planning table, you can get a pen. On that pen is uh, the, sc the scribe of that website. You can follow our progress in real time. You can comment. You can add to the discussion. Please engage. Please tell your friends, family, and neighbors to engage. Uh, because without that engagement, uh, we may not get the plan that is best for us in the future. So thank you so much. And before I leave the stage, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce uh, Linwood Chief of Police, Cole Langdon. I'm going to move the box out of the way. Well, uh, before I get started here, I just I see a lot of faces, friendly faces out here. And uh, 27 years with the city, I'm so grateful for the partnership. So as I see friends, partners, community members, that's the magic sauce that makes things work down here. So thank you for what you do. And you're going to see a lot of my speech centers around that overwhelming sense of gratitude. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Cole Langdon, and I have the privilege of leading a group of public safety professionals who make up the Lima Police Department. And before I share some exciting and notable happenings in the police department, I wanna take a moment to express my gratitude to my staff who are here, uh, four of whom who just came under fire a week and a half ago while serving and protecting this community. The incident happened just about three blocks to the south of us. We came very close to a tragic outcome. I'm grateful that nobody in that incident was seriously hurt. Uh, they weren't physically harmed. And the risk of this profession, the ultimate sacrifice people within our profession can be called upon to make, was further made clear when our community lost a young trooper just days ago. So with that, I'd like to take a bit of this, just a moment, uh, to remember Trooper Chris Gadd's sacrifice, particularly Sam family's sacrifice, as they carry a, a burden of loss and pain for the rest of their lives. If you could join me in that moment of silence. Thank you. As I reflect on where we are, where we're heading, 
I'm filled with a sense of gratitude. I'm grateful and humble to walk alongside dedicated professionals as we serve this awesome community. During such a dynamic and exciting time in our history, you heard from David here just a moment ago, you have good, well-trained people keeping you safe day and night who are guided by our values of professionalism, vigilance, and community. Over 25 years of service community has taught me that public safety doesn't come unilaterally. Rather, it's co-produced between a police department and the community it serves, partnerships, relationships. It's all about the relationships. And public safety doesn't mean the absence of crime or crisis. It was about 15 years into my job when I read that in an article that you know, there is no arrival. As long as we have people walking the earth, there will be human failing. But instead, public safety is the existence of trusting relationships forged between the police department and its community. And the byproduct of this trust and relationship is a strong and resilient community that can pivot and adapt to meet the challenges unique to the community. As I stand here, I know our relationship is solid, but there's always work to be done, just like any relationship. There's no arrival. We can always do more to make the relationship stronger, and we're committed to doing so. Our clear commitment of our, uh, of our commitment to building these relationships can be seen in our five-year strategic plan, which was just built on the coattails of the city's overall strategic plan. Uh, the plan's goals relate to being resilient and being intentional in this relationship forming. And those goals are ensure high quality of life for our community. That's our prime directive, to make sure that you can go out and about and be safe and feel safe as you go out and live your lives and walk through with your loved ones. Enhance organizational culture. Having a happy workforce, a responsive workforce that wants to go out there and again, engage in this high-risk pr profession uh, serves us all better. So we wanna have people that are healthy, happy, and whole as they go out there. And we wanna make sure we're hearing from our employees and we have a strong and healthy organizational culture. Then we wanna strengthen communication internally and externally. And that work is ongoing. So as you look at our strategic plan, which is online, you'll see that there's no arrival. There are steps we're gonna take, there are processes that we're building in, but this is gonna be a constant revisiting and a constant tinkering to make things better and stronger. Then on, the, the thing that really excites me as we start to step into our new criminal, or sorry, our community justice training center, community justice center, uh, is the implementation of innovative criminal justice programs to address harmful behavior. No one, before I talk about some of these exciting developments, I know it's on most people's mind, and I can easily spend most of my time up here pointing to the crime rates and acts of violence afflicting our region, including our community, robbing people of their sense of safety, and in some very tragic cases, causing real harm, loss of life, and trauma. We've had our share of violence and crime even in our city. This is a world and reality the members of your police department confront daily. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, it's tough work for them, but they're happy to do it. I could focus all day on what's wrong in society in the sense of being overwhelmed by the human brokenness that's on display. However, strangely, it's in this brokenness and the human crisis where I see real acts of beauty and selflessness every day on my officers as they wade into crisis, working to make things better for the community. I bore witness to acts of sacrifice, compassion, love, bravery, committed by my employees every day, and I'm grateful to bear witness to that. And knowing that we have such good people working here, uh, serving a community full of individuals and leaders who are committed to finding solutions to these very complex issues, it's not just about more police, it's not about more jails, it's us all coming together and looking at the upstream issues. Um, I'm grateful that we're having these vibrant and relevant conversations. So I want to highlight several things that energize me as I reflect on your police department and how, where it sits in this uh, city's future. Our community justice center is about to open. And really that justice center is only happened because of community involvement, community engagement, community support. Um, the whole goal of that is to provide meaningful resources, meaningful off ramps for people who are struggling, for people who might be broken. And with that, we want to walk alongside them and let them know it's okay to be broken. We want to help put you back together, incorporate you back into our community, and let you move on with your life. And we don't expect perfection. We don't expect this to be a one touch and we're done. We recognize the messiness of humanity, the humanness. And so we're gonna walk alongside them. And I'm really excited that we built a space. We have great partnerships with our court, where we're gonna facilitate a lot of this. Jail staff, I wanna point out, are any of my jail staff here still? Can you raise your hands? Okay. Please share the message, I'm so grateful. We shut down our jail a couple years ago as we uh, built this community justice center. And the fact that you stuck around and you're allowing us to hold on to this institutional knowledge, which allows us to open that much more quickly so we can focus on these innovative programs rather than starting at a very base level. 
It's going to allow us to get up and running. I'm thankful for that. So thank you for what you do, and thank you for your commitment to this community. <sighs> Reentry program. Uh, Representative Lauren Davis, I don't know if she's in there. I think she's probably still down in Olympia. I don't think she's here today. Uh, had a very exciting conversation with her last week. We're one of only two jails in the whole state that are on the hook for a uh, reentry program that's modeled after the Skalem Tribe reentry program that they have over there, which is really about removing barriers to employment for incarcerated individuals, providing services to help them develop skills and secure gainful employment, which is ultimately going to benefit all of us as well as the individual. Looking at a strength-based approach, looking at what are you good at, not what's wrong with you, where are you broken, but what are your strengths? How can we move forward, focus on those strengths, lean on those strengths, and get you back out there and support you? Beautiful idea for this program. We're really excited about it. Our Crisis Stabilization Center, the CRC, that will be opening later this spring. It's one of few community-based crisis stabilization centers in the, in the state. This is part of that overall vision of a network of place where people can come and heal, they can stabilize before they are released back out into the community. So it's us taking care of the people within our community and I think it's a beautiful model. We're very excited about it. My Chief's Advisory Committee, I believe I saw Wally here. Are any of my other, Wally, raise your hand, there you are. I wanna thank you. I express my gratitude and the guidance, the sage advice you give me uh, as we go out and we dive into some very messy difficult situations. There's no magical answers. There's no magic answer book. I got chief six months ago and I found out really quick there's no magical answer book. So having people that I can rely on that have a heart for making the community better, uh, that actually care about the community. I mean, Wally, you're just a gem and thank you so much and thank you to my other community members, community advisory members. I also want to celebrate that we are finally to a spot where this summer we can envision moving away from a crisis response staffing model that we've had at the police department now for the last two and a half years. Moving away from just being able to respond to 911 calls, which is where we've been. Being on that back foot is unhealthy for all of us. Not having the ability or the extra time to go and walk a neighborhood, to talk with people, look at the underlying issues, spend that time really getting to know the community rather than just dealing with the one call going on to the next being tired because you've been mandated to work overtime. I'm so grateful for the staff that have stuck around, uh, that have been here with very much a community mindset of wanting to go out and serve and make things better. I'm grateful to them. And as we move forward, I've attended some graduations the last couple months, and as these employees, and again, this is about a year and a half long process from time of them applying for the spot to time of them being able to go out there and answer a 911 call on their own. That means we start to fill back in our specialty units. So when we have youth violence, when we have uh, complex uh, issues, quality of life issues in the community where we need to partner with other city departments and other uh, non-governmental organizations in our community, we have the staff that can do that, that can start to engage in this work, focusing on upstream things. So excited for that work. So thank you, my staff have stuck around. I'm gonna close out now. Uh, actually, some of my employees had a bet going and we're running the clock that I was gonna take 30 minutes. I'm known to talk too much. But I just want to say thank you for being our why. And that's to all of our community people that might be listening. Uh, we love our work. We love our community. And as we work to make things better, uh, we're grateful to be out here doing it. So thank you. Thank you, Director Kleisch and Chief Langdon. Now we're gonna take a look back at the last hundred years or so of Linwood history. Don't worry, it's not gonna be like all of hundred. City of um, Linwood History and Heritage Board member, Sherry Ryan has been a champion of preserving Linwood's history for years. And today she will provide a fascinating history lesson. Will you please join me in welcoming Sherry Ryan to the stage? Okay, where'd the clicker go? Community policing at its best. 
Uh, this morning we've heard a lot about where the city's going, which is very exciting, but I want to share with you where the city of Linwood has been as this year we celebrate the city's incorporation 65 years ago. Linwood's incorporation on April 23rd, 1959, was not the only thing of great significance that took place that year. Two months prior, Christine Burtis was born on February 12th. Little did we know one day she would become the mayor of the city of Linwood. Mayor Frizzle, I wish you and the city a happy 65th birthday. Okay. So this is a 1910 map of uh, Linwood. It's uh, Township 27, North Range 4. This is us. If you have a deed, if you go and you look at your property description, it's gonna start out with this. There's 36 sections in the township. Each township is 640 acres and it's six by six miles. The lines are not roads, they're section lines. And if you can find Elizabeth Morris, I think it's on there. It's a little bit tough. Anyway, that's where the Alderwood Mall would be today. You'll see a hunk that's uh, called School Land. And each township set um, aside a section for um, when the property was sold, the money went to the state towards schools. The majority of this area was heavily forest without a real name when people started arriving here. Some were staking claims as homesteaders, others were just passing through to find work. Some were immigrants, while many came from other parts of the country hearing of cheap land, and others were speculators, such as the logging companies. One of those logging companies was the Puget Mill Company, a subsidiary of Pope and Talbot located in San Francisco. By the early 1900s, they had accumulated and logged almost 7,000 of acres in this township. So what they were left with was logged land covered in stumps and snags, and it was non-productive, but they were paying taxes to Snohomish County uh, on timberland value. So. What Puget Mill did, they created the Alderwood Manor plan, and this is a 1927 map, and you see a lot of green all over the map. Everything in green is what Puget Mill owned. So it went down, they owned some on the tip of Lake Washington, up ever you can see. But they, this, so this was all referred to as Alderwood Manor. What they did as part of their marketing plan is they created a demonstration farm located at the Alderwood Manor stop on the Seattle Everett Interurban Railway. And it's the easiest way to tell you where this is now, about 196th and 99th, and where the Jaguar dealership is. The main purpose of the demonstration farm was a marketing tool to show people how they could farm their land and become poultry farmers and they referred to these people as little landers. Their marketing plan included sending realtors to cities such as Butte, can't go down, thank you, uh, Fargo and St. Paul, Chicago. Uh, many people bought their land sight unseen here, and some of them never came out here, but they could buy five acres for $1,000, $10 down, $10 a month. And what they told you is you could come out here and you could raise poultry. Uh, yeah, but I will say that in the early 1920s, Alderwood Manor was the largest egg producing community in the United States, just behind Petaluma, California. So this is uh, Highway 99, 1927. They started at the Seattle King County line and then they went south from Everett meeting in the middle and it opened seven uh, miles on October 25th, 1927. It was a 20 foot wide strip of concrete, approximately 10 inches thick. In 1937, Carl Barron, a Seattle realtor, uh, divided property he owned between 196th and 200th into 18 lots. Inspired by the name Alderwood to the west, he named his plat Linwood using his wife's name Lynn and adding wood. In 
1938, uh, Pete Fulton built a lumber store on one of the lots, and he called it Linwood Lumber. Linwood Cabinets and Linwood Feeder Supply opened, and this area slowly grew and became the crossroads at that time. In 1956, a group of 18 citizens formed an incorporation committee that focused on an area west of Alderwood Manor. In 1958, they put it on the ballot for the first time, but the vote failed. And then they took a smaller area and presented to the voters. This time, voters approved the incorporation two to one with a mayor council style government. Jack Bennett was elected as the first mayor. To give you an idea, the city's boundaries at that time were 76th to the west, 44th to the east, 212th to the south, 188th to the north, and there was a little jog out onto 180th between 68th and 62nd. The first population was 6,000 in an area of three square miles. Once Linwood was certified as an official city, it was time to create all departments necessary for operating the city, a planning commission, adopting building codes, and setting zoning ordinances. Mayor Bennett approved a city clerk, a treasurer, and an attorney. The mayor and the new council met at Mayor Bennett's real estate office until a building was purchased six months after incorporation. I don't know where that picture went. We'll come back. Um, this is the crossroads. And if you look today, you can start, you can probably start finding some spots, but uh, 196 is going vertical that way, 99. The biggest building there was James Village, where um, Albertsons was the anchor store. Okay, back to here we go. Here's the City Hill Hall photo. Um, they purchased this two uh, bedroom brick home. It was uh, on 196th and uh, 52nd on the north side of the road. Uh, the City Hall was upstairs and the police department was downstairs. Uh, it included a dispatch center and two jails. Al Glant was hired as the first police chief and the city was served by four officers in addition to Chief Glant. In 1971, the Civic Center campus opened a new police headquarters. When the city moved out of this building, it became occupied by the Snowcom Dispatch Center. Snohomish County transferred ownership of all the streets to the city, and the street department started with one employee and one dump truck. That was it. Um, there are still five businesses. When David talked about, I think what we have 5,400 businesses or something, five of those businesses were here in 1959 and uh, applied for business license. They're um, Linwood Skate and Bowl, Washington Fed, Associated Glass, Harris Ford, and KC Automotive. Originally, fire protection was provided by Snohomish County Fire District 1. This station, the Alderwood Manor Station, is located right where we are today. Uh, on the left is the fire station, and if you looked over on the right, you can see the first part of the word library. That's where the library was in Alderwood Manor before the one was built um, in Linwood. In 1969, Linwood hired its first police chief, Ken Montgomery. The station at 44th and 188th was built, and full-time firefighters were hired to begin on January 1st, 1970. So this is an aerial of Alderwood Manor Town Center, 1953. Let me see. Um, if you can see where all the school buses are, that's across the street where the Alderwood Grade School was. And if you can look at the brick building over there, the, tall, the like three, four stories, that was the Masonic Temple. It's an Ethiopian church today. The uh, road going um, vertically, or, or at the angle there, that would be 196. Over the years, the city limits of Linwood expanded through annexation that included the rural community that had been Alderwood Manor for years. Alderwood Manor tried to incorporate in the 40s and the 60s and one time in the 70s and they gave up. Because one of the things that impacted the area that kind of... Um, Alderwood really couldn't grow is the construction of Interstate 5, covering 19 miles between Seattle and Everett. 
A ribbon cutting ceremony took place on February 3rd, 1965, but it came right through the heart of Alderwood Manor. So it sent a lot of people toward Linwood to do business. Um, I want to spend my remaining time just showing you kind of a little snippet of uh, photos. This is Scriber Lake. Uh, this was the road project in the mid-1960s when 196 would become a four-lane road. And if you were around at that time, you would remember that they uh, reconstructed it over um, a 40-foot deep peat bog of the lake. Legs were um, laid in crisscross fashion, filled with sand, and then um, the fill was uh, brush, hog fuel, and they even invited people to bring their Christmas trees and throw in there. But what happened <laughs> over time, the roadbed, logs and brush started popping up and they had to keep redoing it. And uh, it's estimated that the, it was uh, 10 feet deep, the pavement. Wilcox Park. This is the first city park developed in 1962. Up, up at the very top, you can see a building that was Linwood Junior High. Ah, the Snow King Theater, another thing if you lived here back. This Highway 99, north of 176. It opened in 48 and closed in 86. The uh, Linwood Skate and Bowl, like I said, they're one of the remaining businesses from 59. The Bowling Alley opened in 56, and they added the Rollaway in 1958. The Lynn Theater. Okay, so Wendy hung out at the mall and the Grand Cinemas. This is where my people, we hung out at the Lynn. It opened in 1963. A double, this double feature was a buck 50 for adults and 50 cents for children. It soon would become the Lynn Twin, adding a second screen in 1964. And in 1977, they added two more screens, becoming the Lynn Four. It closed in 1986. And then we got a McDonald's. See the arches there on the right? It opened in 1964, uh, 58th and 196th. And then Jimbo's. You can see this. They're getting ready to close here. Uh, Jimbo's was originally called Bing's Burgers. Jim and Dorothy Anderson bought the restaurant in 1963, changing the name to Jimbo's. They sold it in 1999, and it closed in 2007. Institution in Linwood. White's Nursery. Chauncey White opened the nursery in 1962. He sold it then to Dorothy and Jim Anderson. And it closed, they sold it in 2017. Okay, this was a big deal in Linwood, Fred Meyer opening in 1968. This is actually Mr. Fred Meyer himself came up to cut the cake. But the big thing that happened was Tiny Tim came and did a concert. And then, as a lot of activities back in those days, J.P. Patches and Gertrude came. Big deal. This is 36th Avenue West, back then known as North Trunk North. And this would be standing right about where we are today, at 196 looking north. Ah, Wendy, here's the Alderwood Mall as I knew it. This was supposed to be back built and opened in the early 70s. And my high school friends and I thought we're going to get jobs there. We're going to go hang out there. That's going to be our place. Didn't open until 79. So this photo is taken from up on 36. The property's been cleared, but this is where my people went and rode their dirt bikes and horses. Ah, the Linwood Days of Progress. This was uh, 1951, the Linwood Commercial Club uh, started this and a festival and the, perp the main purpose to was raise money for a park, but this was before even Linwood Incorporated. Linwood Days of Progress, then transitioned to Linorama, and then Linorama tra transitioned to Trolley Days for a short amount of time, 95 to 99. But Linorama was a big deal, a carnival style thing in the Fred Meyer parking lot, James Village, took over the town, huge parade. So this is just a real snippet. This is the um, Linwood Auto Manor Heritage Museum over in Heritage Park. 
Um, if you've never been to Heritage Park, you do need to visit because besides our museum, there's the Northwest Vets Museum, there's the Snow Owl Genealogy Society, and the 1910 a Seattle Ever Inner Urban Trolley car is on display there. I invite you all to come. The museum's open on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, 11 to 3. And we have an exhibit right now that's called Linwood Alderwood Manor Now and Then, where you can see more photos like I've showed you today. Thank you for having me. is that I have, I'm scarred. When my sister was, I think she was 14, that would make me 10 or nine, she talked my mother into it, um, going on a date and she would bring me as a safety net. Of course, she left me there immediately and I chose to see Animaville Horror as my, <laughs> because I never got to see a rated R movie, right? Well. I mean, I can't see a scary movie to this day. I had to call my mother to pick me up. My sister got grounded for months. And so, yeah, the Lynn Four, that's why the Goonies was at the Grand Cinema. Actually, I want to bring the mayor up and, um, oh, can you stick around for a second? And um, I just want to um, keep you on the stage just for a quick second because Mayor Frizzell has something to share with you. I do. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. That took me back I, I in so many ways. So uh, preserving history is a tool for managing growth, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering public pride, and maintaining community character. Sherry Stadler Ryan is among a select few families who settled in Alderwood Manor in 1928 and who has firsthand knowledge of the Alderwood Manor area and Linwood from pre-incorporation. Sherry has also been a regional, excuse me, a recognized local historian through her many contributions to the historical knowledge and preserved historical facts and stories of Alderwood Manor, conducted through her research, various publications and exhibits at the Historic Demonstration Farm Superintendent's Cottage at Heritage Park. Sherry has been a member of numerous organizations, including the president of the Linwood Alderwood Manor Heritage Association, a member of Snow Isle Genealogy Society, and a member of the Snohomish Historic Preservation Commission. She has dedicated many years of volunteer work to preserve and share the history and culture of Alderwood Manor and the city of Linwood. Sherry Stadler Ryan has been a driving force behind numerous historical, interpretive, and preservation projects, such as co-authoring the 2010 Images of America, Seattle Everett Interurban Railway, Railway Book, as well as being a contributing researcher, author, and editor of Linwood's comic book, 50th birthday book, and a dozen of articles videos, and exhibits about Linwood history. She has been a dedicated volunteer, including a member of the History and Heritage Board and Heritage Park Partners, helping to form museums, exhibits, and programming at the city's only historic preservation site. Sherry Stadler Ryan has contributed to making Linwood, excuse me, to making history in Linwood by championing the restoration of the water tower, one of my favorite buildings. The installation of a playground at Heritage Park and the inspiration behind the I Love Linwood sculpture at Linwood Event Center. Now, as the mayor and council president, is right here, of the city of Linwood, we proclaim that Sherry Stadler Ryan shall be designated the official city historian, and that she shall receive a key to the city. I'm not sure what it's going to open, but... <laughs> Come on over. Thank you. Thank you so much for reconnecting us to our history. Do you have any words you want to say? <laughs>
Um, as a researcher and writer, really, I have no words right now, but thank you very, very much. I know Betty Gang was uh, also bestowed with this, and Betty passed away a year ago at the age of 97, is Miss Dearly, and so she's big shoes to fill, And uh, but I'm just happy to do what I can to uh, keep the history around here going, because it is a great history. Thank you. We're good. And we're not done at a future, a future, back to the future again, a, a future council meeting, there's going to be a proclamation. There'll be recognition of you for you and your family. So thank you, Sherry, for all you do for us. Thank you. Okay. You're good now. <laughs> back to India. Oh, gee, oh, it's your turn. Wow. I didn't know I was next. Could somebody hand me uh, my speech? It, it's more than two pages. So settle in. All right, so the step that, uh, clicker. Oh. oh, so many things. So uh, the step that Chief Langdon so easily shoved aside is actually up here <clears throat> for us short folks. So uh, hello, welcome to the State of the City Address. Please join me in thanking Wendy Poshbag for emceeing the event for us this morning. I also want to thank again the dignitaries whom Wendy acknowledged for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for partnering with Linwood. We welcome and appreciate you. I also want to thank Mike Evans for being here this morning. He needed to step out. But long before the city of Linwood was incorporated, this area was home to his Snohomish people. We want you to know, we want Mike to know that we value his partnership and we are dedicated to honoring and lifting up native voices here in Linwood. We are honored to be the current stewards of this land. Thank you, Director Kleitch, Chief Langdon, and city historian, Sherry Ryan, for sharing your expertise with us this morning. We've got a deep bench and we appreciate it. I also wanna thank our amazing City of Linwood employees and our department directors who took time out of their day this morning to be here. Thank you as well to the Linwood Event Center and the district for hosting us in this lovely place. Next, I wanna acknowledge two pillars of our community who we've lost this past year. As Sherry Ryan mentioned, former city historian Betty Gang was a former Alderwood Manor and Linwood resident, and Betty was instrumental in helping to preserve and interpret our area's history. With her sharp memory and impeccable research skills, she wrote stories for Linwood Today, Heritage Park, and the city. Betty was an incredible woman who loved our community. I really enjoyed reading her articles over the years, and we again extend our condolences to her family. And Lauren Simmons. Former council member Lauren Simmons was a dedicated leader who served our community as council member for 16 years, eight of those as council president. Lauren was a mentor, an advisor, and a great friend to many encouraging others to serve with heart and humility. He was a servant leader. He emphasized teamwork, consensus building, and a passion for helping others. He even kept serving in this community for years when he was no longer on city council. Many elected officials credit Lauren as a major motivator for becoming involved in our city, and I am one of them. It's never easy to lose touch with with such influential members of our community, and I hope you'll join me in a brief moment of silence in their honor and to reflect on their contributions to our city. Thank you. As been mentioned, it's hard to believe that Linwood is turning 65 years old. Was it really that long ago since we celebrated 50? Uh, as Sherry Ryan mentioned, I am the same age as our great city. And personally, 
I think we both look pretty good for our age. <laughs> this morning, I want to take a moment to acknowledge a special guest that I invited this morning. I invited Mr. Dick Gorley to be with us this, this morning and sit in the front row with me. Mr. Gorley was my vice principal at Linwood Junior High, which no longer stands. It's now Cedar Valley Elementary that's been uh, repurposed on that site. But I connected with him about 10 years ago while we were volunteering together. I heard his voice and, you know, there's just something about a voice that can carry through the century, I mean the decades. <laughs> and uh, I heard him and I, I knew that I, I recognized that voice. Dick moved to Linwood in 1953. He was a teacher in the Edmonds School District and then served as vice principal at Linwood Junior High and beyond. Dick is one of many in our community who have made a profound difference in shaping future generations. He influenced thousands of young people during his education career, and he has such wonderful stories to hear how Linwood has grown. Thank you for being here this morning, Dick. We've been sitting a little while, so I want to do a little audience participation. So, could stand up. And if you're, if you're not able to stand, you can raise your hand. So, if you don't live in Linwood, I'm going to ask you to sit down. But thank you. Wow, <laughs> that took out a few. But thank you for being here. If you've lived in Linwood 10 years, excuse me, for less than 10 years, please sit down. Okay, a few more people sat down for that. Sit down if you've lived in Linwood for less than 20 years. Well, I thought this was gonna take longer. <laughs> sit down if you've lived in Linwood for less than 30 years. Wow. How about we go 40? 50? while well, we're losing them right and left here. <laughs> if you've lived in Linwood less than 60 years, that would be after 19, you moved here after 1964, have a seat. We have two people standing. Mr. Gorley, how long have you lived here? 1953. 1953, and Vern? Wow, thank you. I love when we have people who have been around our city for a long time and, and they're still here to talk about it and, and relive those stories. So as each group sat down, I thought about those decades. I thought about my grandparents who came to this area around the turn of the century in a covered wagon from Iowa and their arduous trek to come here for a better life. I thought about my immediate family and growing up in this city my first school-age home is just a short walk down the street from Meadowdale High School, and it's still there today. We moved to Lindale Elementary, the, excuse me, we moved to the Lindale Elementary neighborhood when I entered the fourth grade, and I live in that home today with my dad, who's here, my youngest daughter, and my son-in-law, who live with me today. My oldest daughter, however, <clears throat> has found her home in Colorado, but I'm still working on that. I thought about raising my daughters here as they attended the same elementary and high school that I did. I remember when they were teens and I asked them about voting to fund sound transit and talked about its impact on their future and mine. At that time, I did not believe that I would ever ride sound transit could not see myself riding light rail anywhere other than in England. And I wanted to hear their views before I voted. And now more than a decade later, in just a few months, we will unveil Linwood City Center light rail. I couldn't be more excited. I also thought about us here today and the state of our city. When I look across the room, I see so many familiar faces. We have accomplished and overcome so much together in the last few years, and it's only been possible because of each of you in this room. Our community members, young or old, 
either born here or moved here from across the United States or from other countries, our employees, or the, there's one employee I'm looking for in particular who is retiring next week. Mr. Lynn Sordell, where are you? Thank you. <laughs> Lynn has been so instrumental in leading our Parks and Rec Department and to what they are today. We will miss him. If you're a student who's been interning with us for a quarter, visitors who work here, shop here, or just pass through, we all create the fabric of Linwood. For 65 years, we've woven this fabric. We have woven this tapestry of experiences together, culminating in where and who we are today. Linwood is a special place because of you and has been such an honor to serve as your mayor in my hometown in this time and place. So thank you for that. This morning, I wanna share with you a few more of the exciting things on the horizon. As you've heard from Director Kleitch and Chief Langdon, we are accomplishing significant milestones in 2024 that have been years in the making and have only been made possible with community support and input. At the end of every year, I choose a word to be my set point for the next 12 months. In past years, I've shared that word with just my family and my friends. We talk about it around November, December. Friends ask me, what's your word for next year? What's your word? Well, with so much going on across our city, I think it's important to be secure and grounded in a common foundation, to have a North Star, a focus. So this year I've expanded my word across our city. This year, the word I chose is thrive. To thrive means to prosper, to be successful, to grow or develop vigorously and to flourish. And I don't know about you, but I think that after a few years of COVID, we could all spend some time thriving. As I thought about the word thrive and discussed it with friends and coworkers, I started to look at it more as an acronym with each letter representing a pillar for us to focus on throughout the year. So I wanna share the pillars of my acronym with you today, because this year I'm asking each employee and each department some questions that I've been asking myself and that I will ask you over the rest of our time together this morning. I invite us to think about thriving personally, thriving in each area of our lives, thriving in our jobs, thriving in a city organization, and ultimately thriving in our community. My first pillar of the acronym is thankful. First, I'm so thankful to serve as your mayor going on three years, and before that, as a council member for four years. As your mayor, I have the amazing opportunity to work with some of the brightest, creative, hardworking, and most dedicated public servants. You all take so much pride in your work, and I am daily thankful for that. As we heard from our newest city historian, this region has been under such development and growth, not just for 65 years, but for over 100. We've been around. And there are times when it's hard to believe that this is the same city I grew up in, as you could tell from the pictures there. But when I see something that reminds me that this is my home, it's grown up just like me. Sometimes it's walking past one of my favorite parks, visiting the museum, reminiscing with high school friends, or just connecting with a community member that makes me thankful for the men and women who have come before me. There's been much change, and as you have heard, there is, there's more change on the horizon. Change can be challenging, can be frustrating, and for some, a lot of us, it can be just a little scary. For those of you who have lived in Linwood for years and are hesitant about what's ahead, Please know that we appreciate you and all you have brought and continue to bring to Linwood. We remain strong and committed to maintaining the heart of Linwood. I ask you to consider the following questions as we think about where we have come from and how Linwood has grown. To you, what makes Linwood the great place, the great city that we love? How do we make it even greater for the next generation? The second letter of thrive is H for health. When we think about health, it's hard not to think about our beautiful parks and trails and our recreation center. 
our Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Arts Department continues to find new and innovative ways to improve the health of our community for years to come. Some ways they do that is through securing federal and state grants to combat the effects of climate change, hiring a human services coordinator to connect our vulnerable community members with the services they need to be healthy, and offering a wide range of summer fun at our parks. For many years, Linwood has been committed to being a safe and welcoming city, and that remains today. Each city department and every single employee plays a crucial role in making this goal a reality. First and foremost, we want the community to know, as Chief Langdon spoke about, we hear your concerns. They are our concerns as well. And we are working to address issues and improve our collective sense of safety. The mayor's office, city council, police department, and all city departments are committed to ensuring our community is safe and that we all feel safe. There's also the financial health of our city. Towards the end of this year, we will adopt our 2025-2026 biennial budget. Leading up to that, we want to hear from you and what your priorities are. Later this year, we'll be hosting events. I think we're working on one right here in this building, uh, to provide space for those conversations. Linwood's current economy is healthy and strong. Our sales tax revenue, which make up the majority of our budget, remains steady, and we continue to see a lot of new development in our community. With the impacts of inflation affecting the cost of everything from office supplies to wages and benefits in a very competitive hiring market, to union contracts to bargain, to the vital funding of capital projects, there's going to be some financial challenges. But rest assured, we're preparing for those today, and we have been. As we work through those challenges, I will continue to work with the city council and our department directors on financial sustainability efforts to ensure Linwood's prosperity now and into the future. So as we consider health as part of thriving, I ask you to think about how can we promote health? How do we help our community be healthy, be thriving in physical, mental, emotional, and other health ways? Our third letter is R for relationships. Fostering strong relationships with one another is vital for the success of every organization. I see the city of Linwood as a conduit for building lasting relationships throughout our community and facilitating connections between organizations and businesses and our community members. Through events, volunteer opportunities, and community-driven boards and commissions, we aim to bring our community closer together to improve our city and to address the challenges of today, tomorrow, and beyond. Did you catch all those community references in there? Community is who we are and what we are here for. We also foster relationships with our state and federal elected officials who represent and advocate for our communi community. During the legislative session each year, my team and our council members connect with our representatives to communicate what we hear from our community, and we spend a great deal of time informing them of various project needs. And as good partners do, we ask them what issues we can partner with them on and how we can support them. A lot of community relationships are fostered and nurtured in our public spaces, like our beloved senior center. Our senior center team has created a vibrant space for older adults like me and some of you. Space for adults in our community is regarded as a shining example in their field. And we are looking for ways to increase our physical space at the center to serve even more people. So for this segment, I ask you, what relationships haven't we built yet? What can we build? What relationships can we nurture? Sometimes we need to mend relationships. We need to do that as well in order to help our city thrive. The fourth letter of thrive is intentionality. We are intentionally planning for our future just as community members plan for ours in the decades before us. In 1993, as has been mentioned, thank you, Director Kleitch, our longtime mayor, 
uh, Herdlika and a group of very community-minded people created a document called Legacy Linwood, and it planned many of the changes in our yet-to-be city center area, which we are seeing now 30 years later. This document was prepared with considerable input from more than 200 community members. It has stood the test of time as it projected the coming of light rail and the coming of city center among other projects. And I keep it near my desk and, and open it up every once in a while to remind myself where we've come from. Late last year, our parks love plan was adopted by city council and as a roadmap of funding the future of our park systems. We have 19 parks in Linwood and we're growing. Parks Love was developed using a community-led approach that centers on equity and environmental sustainability. This plan considers how to maintain existing parks to be high quality and safe, and it looks to responsibly expand parks and trails to meet the demands of our growing community. Growth and increased use challenges us to maintain and create streets and roadways that are accessible by cars, buses, bicycles, and pedestrians giving our community members a choice in how they get safely and efficiently from point A to point B. Hasn't our Public Works Department done such a great job with uh, 196th Street last year? We're so glad that, that that's completed and it looks so beautiful. That's what planning and intentionality can do for us. Thank you, Director Franz, for spearheading that and many other projects. We are also preparing for growth by improving our utility system, including the kind that we rely on, but we don't really appreciate until it doesn't work. Yes, I'm talking about our sewer system. In 2022, our wastewater treatment facility plan was finalized. This plan will overhaul our aging system and will ensure the environmental health of our community for decades into the future. This project is a mighty undertaking with a big price tag, and I'm confident that our team is more than up for the task. We've all heard that when we fail to plan, we plan to fail. So my question for intentionality is, what specific ideas and processes do we need to put in place to make sure that we stay the course? The letter V is our fifth letter, which stands for vision. As I've mentioned throughout, I am excited beyond belief about Linwood's future. It's hard to think about what our city will look like in just 10 years when it turns 65. But for now, I'm focused on making sure we are proud of the legacy that we leave behind. In 2022, I was appointed to both the Sound Transit Board of Directors and the Community Transit Board of Directors. Both of these agencies are on the cutting edge of transportation and I'm proud to represent Linwood in their organizations. We have the CEO of Community Transit with us this morning. Thank you, Rick. In 18 days, but who's counting? On March 30th, Community Transit will open the Orange Line, providing bus service from Edmonds College to our transit center, to the mall, and east to Mill Creek and back. Next month in April, April 27th, Sound Transit will open East Link Light Rail, providing transit from Bellevue to Redmond. Then Linwood, that's us, we get to follow less than six months later. These transportation projects were envisioned decades ago and we get the benefit of them now and into the future. Obviously, Linwood is not the only city changing right before our eyes. While well, Snohomish County is looking forward to the Linwood Link extension, along with Mount Lake Terrace and two stations in Shoreline, as Director Kleitsch mentioned, we're also simultaneously thinking of the next couple of decades with ST3, connecting late rail to Alderwood Mall and on up to downtown Everett with many stops along the way. Legacy is what we leave when we are gone. Legacy is what our city is built on. Legacy means a lot to us especially as city employees. We're constantly reassessing and revising our policies and processes to ensure that they exceed, not just meet, industry standards. We want to be the best and give you our best as we're serving our amazing community. 
We're always looking for future employees who want to go beyond the status quo while enjoying the work that they do. If that sounds like you, look at the available positions on our website and please take the time to apply. We'd love to have you. So my visioning goals are what is our legacy? What can we still accomplish? Getting to the last pillar here of the word thrive and quite possibly my favorite is empower. I love to talk about concepts, but I love even more to have action items attached to them. Empowering means making sure that we have the tools that we need to thrive. Equity and inclusivity are essential in how we operate. I challenge my directors and our staff to think about the barriers we see in our community and determine how to remove them to ensure that the people of Linwood not just survive, but thrive and flourish. We do this by empowering people. I firmly believe that the best way to empower our community is through having a well-informed and educated public. Our goal as a city is to always be transparent and accessible, which is why we provide information and updates in so many ways. One of those information tools is our quarterly printed newsletter that's delivered by mail named Inside Linwood. This provides an in-depth look at our city and thought I heard something. An in-depth look at our city and many upcoming events. Earlier this year, we unveiled a new monthly memo, excuse me, monthly online newsletter called the Mayor's Memo, which includes highlights from various departments about the previous month and looks ahead to future events and projects. You can sign up on our website for that. You can also stay informed about the latest Linwood news, projects, job openings, upcoming events, and topics that matter to you with our e-news digital newsletters. You can sign up for those, all of these publications through our website at linwoodwa.gov. Linwoodwa.gov is an incredible source of information about community projects and our departments. It's also a great search engine for all things Linwood. You can also follow us on our social media channels for more updates about what's happening in our city. And if that's not enough, and you wanna go further into the inner workings of our city, as I did in 2014, enroll in what we call Linwood University. It's a great way to see and understand how each department in our city runs. We brought it back last fall after a brief hiatus, and it was so much fun. I'm looking forward. I don't see Nathan right there in the back. Professor Nathan McDonald is excited to get started on this year's class once we get through this state of the city thing. And he's already preparing for what's going to happen in the fall. Finally, please know we want to hear from you. Whether you're here today as a city of Linwood resident or you're part of South Snohomish County, you, we have we have wonderful relationships with Malik Terrace and, and Edmonds and, and Breyer. In case you didn't know, they even share our zip code. Don't know how that happened though. And uh, we're all in this together. We're all part of South County. We wanna talk to you. We wanna hear from you. We wanna hear from people in Linwood that say, Linwood's great, but I got some ideas. I got some ways that, that I think we could be better. So please email us, call us, make an appointment to sit down and chat with us. As you notice on your way in, some of our departments are here today with a resource table in the concourse. As you leave, please take some extra time to visit those tables. They're staffed by wonderful city employees who will be happy to answer your questions because we are here for you. City council meetings happen five times a month and you can attend in person or watch via Zoom it's a great way to see your council members in action. So my question related to empowering is, what tools, what action steps, what processes do we need to put into play to accomplish our next mission? As we begin to close, I wanna leave you with one final question. What can you do? What can I do? What can we do together to help Linwood thrive? To quote my favorite president, Abraham Lincoln, public sentiment is everything. With public sentiment, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. He also said, if you intend to go to work, there's no better place than right where you are. 
So if you're ready to be on this Thrive journey with us, start where you are, look around to see what needs to be done, and connect with one of our many community partners. Likely your passion is a great match for an existing like-minded organization. If that doesn't create a match, let's talk about something new. Let's plant seeds of community and see us thrive. Before we leave, I wanna give a shout out to all the people behind the scenes, photographer, Nathan, uh, my executive team, Julie, Luke, Lila, uh, Doug, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for what you give to our city. Thank you to everyone who joined us today. We're so overjoyed to be working together to enrich the lives of all who live, work, shop, learn, and play in our great city. Thank you for being here today, and thank you for choosing Linwood, and let's thrive together this year. Thank you very much.